Amen. So glad to see you in church today. Glad to see Tabitha and her children and Nathaniel here today. Amen. Sean here this morning. Uh, brother, you told me your name on the back, but I done forgot. Chris. Glad to see Chris here today for the first time. Amen. Our scripture reading will come from Mark chapter 14. We'll read a couple of verses of scripture. I've already felt the spirit of the Lord here this morning. Looking forward to what the Lord has to say to us. I'll try to be mindful of the time this morning, but let's just put our minds on the Lord and let the Lord help us. Mark chapter 14, verse 3, <clears throat> the Bible says, Being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment, a spikenard, very precious. She broke the box, poured it on his head. There were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? might have been sold for more than 300 pence and been given to the poor. They murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why shall be her? She hath wrought a good work on me. You have the poor always. For you have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will, you may do them good. But me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the bearing. Verily I say unto you, Whithersoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she hath done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. Dear Lord, thank you for the Spirit of God that we feel already in this service. We ask for your touch this morning and your anointing. Help us, Lord, to break the box in our life give you all and we give you praise today in Jesus name. Amen. You may be seated. I want to simply preach this morning on break the box. This woman has a box, an alabaster box of ointment. Bible says very precious. Uh, one of the gospels says Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, amen, that would betray the Lord said, why was this waste that it could have been sold for 300 pence? Jesus' day, many times, a day's wages was one penny, one pence. Can you imagine a whole year's worth, a man, of wages is what she gave. The average man's wages for that day, a man, this was worth a whole year's wages. What is the common wages today? What would it be, you know? 20,000, 30,000, what would it be? Amen, 35,000, 32,000, 19,000, 10,000, what do you make? 5,000 a year, 100,000, what is it? What would it be worth to you? A whole year's wages. Most commentators and Bible scholars agree that she probably had received this as an inheritance. It had been passed down as an inheritance to her. No doubt had been given to her. Here was all that she had, all that she had to offer. The Bible says when she break the box, amen, that the house was filled with the odor of this ointment, this sweet perfume, amen. Uh, they would say that they would take out a little bit at a time and use Amen. And many times it would be passed down from generation to generation. Or maybe even possibly take out some and sell at the market. Maybe to pay off a bill or pay, amen, for some medical uh, charges or something like that. But regardless of whatever the case in her life, she brought this alabaster box and she broke the box. She didn't take and pour just a little bit out and save some for herself. No, she broke the box and said it's yours from now on. It's all yours. Now, I believe the Lord would like for us, instead of just taking our alabaster box in life and pour a little bit out a little bit at a time and say, here, Lord, I'll give you a little bit. 
Here, Lord, I'll worship you today. Here, Lord, I'll serve you for a little while. Here, Lord, I'll make a little commitment to you. No, I believe it's God's will for us to break the box this morning. Hallelujah. In our life and say 100% to God, nothing left for me, nothing left for myself, only what God wants in my life. Amen. Jesus took up for her. He defended her. He said, why would you trouble her? Why would you, amen, murmur against her? Leave her alone. It's amazing. You serve God, somebody's going to get jealous. You sell out to God, somebody's going to fight against you. Somebody will come out of the woodwork and say, man, why are they so sold out to God? Why is this way? You go to living for God, why? Look at all the fun you're missing. Look at all the good times that you could be having and you're just wasting your life, amen, by breaking that box and giving it all to God. My Lord, help us. I mean, all the fun in this world. My Lord, help us, Jesus. Amen. To break the box and give it to God. They murmured against her. They had indignation in their heart. David came down there, shouted for the battle. His brother said, Amen. What are you down here for? Amen. There was that same spirit that rose up. Amen. In, in David's eldest brother that rose up in Judas Iscariot here. What's this waste of you breaking this box? You could have, you could have given 300 pence to the poor. The Bible says he didn't say that because he cared for the poor. He said that because, amen, he was a thief. Oh my. God help us. And he had the bag of money in his hand. And he was going to sell Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. He could have gave that to the poor. I'm telling you in times in our life, amen, we might give or do extra or do something, you know, in a certain area. People say, wow, what a waste. You could do all these great things with that. Amen. But I'm telling you, there's nothing like that moment in God's presence that makes the difference in our life. It made the difference in her life and it'll make the difference in our life that moment in the presence of Jesus when we give him all. Amen. That moment in the presence of God when we consecrate ourselves to God and say, Lord, here's my worship. Lord, here's my praise. Lord, here's my life and it's all yours. We don't hold nothing back for ourselves. We break the box. I'm preaching this morning on break the box. I'd like for just a little while as I watch the clock this morning, talk to us about two things. And that's first off, break the box of pure, holy living. Amen. And break the box of worship to God. Amen. And giving praise to God. I believe that God is pleased with a life, amen, of holy living. I know this world ain't serving God. I know this world, amen, tries its best to go the opposite way of living for God. You might face persecution when you come, amen, to the place in your life where you make up your mind, amen. Sometimes the hardest word to say is no. Amen. Sometimes the hardest word to say is no. Joseph said no. Amen. I'm going to live for God. My character is more important than my coat. Hallelujah. Amen. My soul is worth more than what you have to offer. Break the box of holy living. Living for God in this hour. I think about times, amen, when we, you know, you live for God and try to do the best you can, brothers and sisters. Amen. Maybe making decisions with their family or children or circumstances to give off for God. And the world don't understand. Your family is not going to understand when you go to live for God. They're going to think it's a waste. Amen. It doesn't matter what it is. If you choose to turn your back on the weak and beggarly elements of this world, this world don't understand. They're not, not going to understand why you don't, you know, party and carry on and run around. And I mean, you know, it, it's just, you know, uh, I was raised by godly parents and I thank God for it. You know, and, and I thank God for the life and the, and the protection that they gave me and so many things. Somebody said talking about what God kept, uh, pulled them from. 
amen, or what God pulled them out of. And I, I, if, I thank God for what He kept me from. Amen. All of the heartaches and failures and, and disappointments that I didn't have to experience by, amen, being raised in the, in the straight and narrow way. But they won't understand. Amen. When you go to living for God and making commitments to God, when you break your box, there'll be that indignation that'll rise up and say, what a waste, living for God that way. I mean, look at all the parties, look at all the fun, look at all the games, look at everything you can do. And I, 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 uh, I don't think it was worth anything or I would have cut it out, but I made note of it. I was reading an article in Time Magazine here directly not long ago and, and there was an article in there about Christians. This, this writer, and I, y'all might know his name. I didn't, I don't remember his name or anything and I just read about as much as I could stomach and I wanted to throw up, but he's talking about Bible, you know, Bible people and people actually do live by the Bible. He was right, like he was writing about aliens or something. And, uh, you know, I'm not being alien to some of them people and they may, he said people actually live by the Bible. If the Bible says it, they won't do it. Or if the Bible says it, they do it. He's writing all these things. And uh, he made a comment comment in there that just about blew my mind. And uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say this morning or or point out what he said. And uh, he carried on about it for a while. He said, you know, there's actually people that call themselves Christians that will only be with one woman their whole life. Huh. I thought that's the way it was supposed to be. We're living in a day and hour where the normal is abnormal and the abnormal is normal. I mean, this guy was writing to people, or whether he was putting it on or not, he portrayed it that it was so bizarre that your intimate life would only be with one person. And that we got this strange teaching out of a book called the Bible. Yeah. And there's people that believe that way. I mean, we live in a day and hour now. We live in a free sex society. It didn't used to be that way, but it is now. It's free. But I'm telling you, it ain't right. And that alabaster box of holy living, there'll be indignation. What a waste. I mean, this guy was carrying on like this was the strangest thing in the world, that we would believe what the Bible says. Amen. And that we would live like what the Bible says. And maybe he was putting it on, maybe he had never heard. But I felt sorry for that guy. I really did. And, I, you know, I really felt sorry for him. I feel sorry for people living the way they live, running wild and carrying on and waking up, you know, and all kinds of uh, nonsense going on. Lord, help us today to break the box of holy living. You know, things in this life, when we live a certain way, it pleases God. When that woman broke that box on Jesus, it pleased Jesus. Amen. It brought such a, a satisfaction to the Lord. Now I want to tell you, young people, this morning, when you live for God and please God, it pleases Him. It makes Him happy. Amen. I know that there's so many things in our life that we find ourselves in. Amen. And sin brings us to a place in our life where we don't want to be. Amen. But God has a way of erasing the curse. And God has a way of reversing the curse and making everything different in our life. Amen. Where we can please Him with our life. Furthermore, the Bible says, We then beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus that ye, as ye have received, Received of us how you ought to walk and to please God so ye would abound more and more. I was praying for the children this morning. Amen. As I was laying hands on them, I was thinking about, uh, amen, when I was a child. Amen. Praying for my son when I was a child, kneeling at the altar. Amen. Many years ago. Amen. Praying for those dull boys. I was thinking about Caleb. Uh, amen. And Aaron as little bitty boys. 
boys, praying for Shiloh, thinking about Courtney as a little girl. Amen. Praying for uh, Texana and Savannah, thinking about Sister Jan as a little girl. Amen. These children will all grow up one day. Amen. They may be preaching. My son may be pastoring. Your son may be pastoring. Your daughter may be preaching. They may be the one playing the piano and singing. Amen. That's why it's important for us to break the box. Amen. And please God. I thank God for people. Amen. In the past that have broke the box for holy living. I know the house was filled. Amen. With their lifestyle of living for God. You can go to Walmart and see a hole in a sister. Amen. They shine like a light bulb. The whole store is filled with the odor of the ointment. Amen. That box of holy ointment. Amen. That they've broken and broken in the presence of God and brought forth in his glory. The Bible said that Enoch had this testimony that he pleased God. This woman broke that box in Jesus' presence. Amen. And she pleased the Lord. I want you to know you can live for the devil. Amen. I want you to know you can live in sin. You can go your way and you might make it to heaven one day. Amen. But if you choose to break that box of holy living, say I'm going to live for God. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to live a lifestyle that's pleasing to God in His sight. Amen. The whole house will be filled with the odor of the ointment. Those around you will know. Amen. Those you work with will know. Those you rub shoulders with will know. There's something different about this brother. There's something different about this sister. What happened to you? What happened? I'll tell you what happened. Amen. I had an alabaster box of ointment. Amen. I could have did whatever I wanted to with it. I could have sold it for the devil. I'll tell you what a waste is if she would have sold it penny by penny and used it on the things of this world and the pleasures of this world that only last for a season. Amen. It's been 2,000 years ago and we're preaching about it this morning and not only that, Jesus said wherever the gospel's preached in the whole world, it's going to be preached about this woman who broke that box in the presence of Jesus. I'll tell you what a real waste is, is when we live our life pleasing to ourselves. That's what a real waste is. Amen. But when we live our life pleasing to God, it makes all the difference in the world. They said that Hudson Taylor, missionary, as a young man, there was two boys in the Taylor family, just a normal family in the church, and uh, said that, that Hudson Taylor made up his mind, said that these boys had great potential, and said Hudson Taylor made up his mind that he was going to be a missionary. And he was going to serve the Lord. He was going to do what he could for God. And said his older brother, amen, got really involved in politics and in his uh, later, you know, years of schooling and all and getting close to college age. And he made up his mind that he was going to join the parliament, amen, of England and be, make a difference in the state and the statehood and, and make choices and all that. And, and he did that. He became a statesman and became part of the parliament and all of that. And Hudson Taylor, amen, gave himself to God and, and uh, traveled in China and started many churches and traveled the world and preached the gospel. And uh, they said that as they got older, amen, he, the, one, the older brother, Brother retired and all of that, amen, and basically just became a forgotten man and said on his tombstone, it says the brother of Hudson Taylor. And Hudson Taylor stood and said, my brother told me he was going to make a name for the Taylor family. Praise God. But I'll tell you who made a name for the Taylor family. It was the one that broke the box and said, I'm not going to sell this penny by penny and use it for my Self, but instead I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to live a life of holy. I'm going to live a life of purity. I'm going to give myself consecrated to God. Amen. You try to find a selfish, a selfish person. A person who lives selfishly. You try to find them after they're gone. Nobody knows where they're buried. Do you find men that donated their life 
to the cause of patriotism or freedom in America and lived a selfless life, maybe even give their blood. Amen. They're, they're well known. They're known for God. They're known for the cause of freedom. Amen. And it's the same case in our life, young people. The Bible says in Hebrews, hurrying on Hebrews chapter 13, 16, but to do good and communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices God is well pleased. It's a sacrifice to live right. It's a sacrifice. It's not going to be easy. Preacher said that it's going to be easy. Amen. More than likely he lied to you. The preacher that said it wasn't going to be no problems. You come and serve God. You'll never have no problems. You'll never fight the devil. Amen. I must tell you that's not true. You'll probably face situations and troubles more than you could ever imagine in your life. It's a sacrifice. Amen. To do good. Amen. But God is pleased with such sacrifices. Amen. The Bible tells us us in verse 21 of the same chapter amen that he would make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen now compared to the ways of sin amen it is easy amen Jesus Christ yoke is easy compared to the yoke amen that you'll uh, wear or use amen have upon you in the life of sin. Amen. But I'm not here to tell you, amen, that if you get saved or serve God, you'll never have no problems. Amen. Because all hell is against you if you serve God. Like I preached here a while back, he came to make war with the remnant of the seed of that woman that kept the commandments of God. Amen. And there's no telling what you might go through, but you'll have God to help you. Amen. He can make us perfect in every good work to do his will. Anybody perfect today? We don't feel perfect. We don't act perfect. We don't, you know, in our life we think, my, look at all the mistakes we made. I'm telling you, we're perfect in his sight. Amen. When my child was born, when Brianna was born, the doctor looked at us and said, she's perfect. What do you mean she's perfect? She couldn't walk. She couldn't talk. I mean, she couldn't sing. She couldn't play the piano. She couldn't even say, daddy, all she could do was just let out a whimper and a wail, amen, and cause a big fuss and carry on, but the doctor said she was perfect, hallelujah. I'm telling you, when you come to God, amen, you may not have it all right, you may still have problems, addictions, troubles to overcome in your life, amen, but that born again child of God, that brand new baby in the faith, come on now, they may have a ways to go, but God says they're perfect. I'm telling you, we go back for a Appointments. Amen. Six months old, you know. She's reaching for things. Praise God. Amen. She's grabbing things, you know. Hallelujah. She's, you know, setting up probably something like that. Eight, nine months old. Crawling around maybe saying, Dad, Dad, you know, Mama, or something like that. Recognizing, you know, the doctor said she's perfect. But if she would have acted like she did when she was a little bitty baby, like when she was one day old, you know what that doctor would have said? Something's wrong. Something's wrong with this child. She's not reaching for this piece of uh, peppermint. She's not crying, you know, this, that. Something's wrong. Same thing when she is two years old. When she is two years old, she couldn't mow the yard. She couldn't, amen, wash dishes. She couldn't run the vacuum cleaner. I mean, she couldn't play the piano. She couldn't sing. She couldn't talk plain. But we go in for that checkup. Are y'all still with me? The doctor said she She's perfect. But if she acts like she's two when she's 18, something's wrong. I want to tell you something, saint of God, this morning when you come to God and get saved, I mean, he makes us perfect. But two years later, if we're still acting like the first day we got saved, come on, church, something's wrong. Hey, man, I stood at the, you know, stood at the gas station, Sister Betty at, uh, at uh, Kilgore Walmart getting gas, and somebody's there. He used to be a preacher. He he used to have a church. What about your church? All these different things. I mean, he's running for the devil going wild. Hey, man, he's telling me about some service he went to and 500 people got saved. 
saved and 50 people got healed and all that. I'm fine with that, whatever. Let me tell you something. If 500 people was getting saved all the time, this world would be changing and communities would be changing and families would be changing. If I told about everybody come down here and shed two crocodile tears in this church, we'd have done had a thousand people saved in Kilgore. I'm telling you, I don't believe God didn't touch them. God can touch somebody, but it's up to that individual to live right and serve God. Amen. I mean, I don't know what I was feeling that day. I said, but let me tell you something, brother. I said, you know, I care about you. You know, I, you know, I said, but I'm walking a different path. I said, I go and preach and do things. I said, but that, a lot of that is nothing but hogwash. I said, if 500 people got saved in Carthage, Texas, there's going to be a difference. There's going to be some bars shut down. Come on now. Y'all still with me? Amen. I think it's time we break the box of pure living. We can say whatever we want to say. I go to Africa, preach. Y'all have no idea how many people get saved. Come back, a hundred thousand people. One guy told me, as I was up there at the, the buffet, he said, man, he said a hundred thousand people got saved while I was there. You know what I thought? I thought, well, it won't take long. This will be on the news, but I kept watching the news. Nothing ever came across. Evidently, they just prayed the sinner's prayer and went back to drugging and smoking and fornicating and everything else. Are y'all still with me? I'm telling you, God will save every man, woman, boy, and girl. Amen. God will wash our sins in his blood. Amen. But when my daughter is nine years old, if she acted like she was one day old, something's wrong and she's not perfect. Amen. But progress is perfection with God. Progress is sanctification with God. And I know many times we fight the same old battles. And I want to preach to you, don't quit fighting those battles. Don't ever give up. Amen. But sometimes God is making us perfect by pulling us on. Amen. Brianna's nine years old now. And when she was 19, if she acted like she is nine, if she still wanted to run around with these little girls, if she, you know, I mean, you know, just, just, you know, you know what I'm saying? There's a progress. Amen. And it's the same way in the Christian life. Amen. And that's the same thing in our life that God wants us to do. Amen. He said he'll make you perfect. Hallelujah. The doctor says they're perfect, but they can't. Amen. Do this or that or the other. They can't make decisions. Can't drive a car. Amen. But just look, wait a little while. And the devil says, oh, look at all the mistakes you're making. You can't drive a car. You can't win. Witness, you can't preach, you can't hardly pray 10 minutes. Amen. You know what I got to say? Just wait a little while. Amen. Keep looking at that clock because I'm just getting started this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. I'm here to tell you. Amen. God wants us to break the box. Amen. I said God wants us to go further with Him. We can come to the house of God and sit every Sunday morning. Come and sit every Sunday night. Amen. But if we go back to sinning, and go back to that lifestyle of living for the devil. Go back to throwing our dice on the table. Amen. Go back to doing whatever we want to do. Drug and drink and carrying on. Amen. We can come down here and pray. Amen. Every Sunday or come in and put our dollar in every Sunday. Amen. But until we break the box. Amen. God didn't want her to come and take that box of alabaster and pour a little bit out here and pour a little bit out here and and pour a little bit out here. And that's what people are doing in their life. Amen. They'll go to the drug house and they'll pour. Amen. That that God's give them out just a little bit there. Amen. They'll run down, buy them some alcohol and pour a little bit more out. Amen. They'll run over here and cheat and lie and pour a little more out. And then lo and behold, they come to church on Sunday morning. Don't worry. They got a little bit for him too. I'm going to raise my hand. Praise God. Put my money in the offering maybe pay my tithes. Amen. But that is such a waste. Come on, church. That is such a waste. What God wants us to do is break the box. Amen. I ain't taking nothing back with me. Amen. I'm not giving nothing else nowhere else. It all belongs to God. My life 
belongs to God. My inheritance belongs to God. My job belongs to God. Everything is Jesus's. And whatever Jesus wants in my life, that's what he can have. Let's just say this is the alabaster box of ointment. It don't smell good. But let's just say this is the ointment. They go over here and pour a little bit on Friday night and have a good time with some friends. Sin and carry on. And make all kinds of bad choices and everything else. Go over here on Saturday. Do something wrong. Pour a little bit. Well, I still got some. I still got some for the Lord. Go over here on Sunday morning in church and we take and we pour our little bit out to God. That, my friend, is the waste. Amen. And when somebody comes in to the house of God, they've got that alabaster box. The Bible says, very precious. Your life is precious. Your family's precious. The choices I make affect my children. It affects my wife. The choices I make affect this church. I bring this box in to God. Hallelujah. I can make a choice. I can pour just a little bit out. Give my little offering, you know. You know what I'm saying, Brother Curtis. Or I can bring that box. Hallelujah. Like that woman did that day. Hallelujah. Shattered the box. She ain't going home with this ointment today. Hallelujah. It's broken before God. And friend, there's something about being broken before God. Amen. She took all she had. Hallelujah. Praise God. Jesus said she did what she could. This is all she could do. I know my box of alabaster seems so small, but the Bible said she broke it. And I'm telling you, many times we come to church with our box, we walk in the door with that box, and the Lord says, oh, today's the day that they're going to break that box and surrender all to me. Hallelujah. And I'm going to make a difference in their life, and I'll never forget it as long as the gospel's preached. And then somebody sees us going out the door, and we still got that box in our hand. Oh, we gave a little bit out of it. It was worth 300 pence. Now it's worth 280 pence. We gave our 20 penny. Hallelujah. It was worth 300 pence and now it's worth 298 pence because we always give our two cents. Hallelujah. I saw Dennis the Minnesota the other day. He come in there and his dad was in there talking to a guy. I'm almost done. Talking to a guy, Shannon. Dennis the Minnesota brought his piggy bank. Sat down. He said, Dad said you always put your two cents in. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But God wants more than our two cents. Hallelujah. He wants it all. Stand together with me this morning. I know I preached too long. Hallelujah.